Hi there, my name is Brett Preston, the Director of Property Operations here at North County Property Group. And today we're going to be talking about one of the more nebulous terms in property management, and that is the concept of normal wear and tear. This term is actually provided to us by the State of California and is written into a California Civil Code, 1950.5b2. The code states that only certain charges can be taken for damage that are beyond ordinary wear and tear. There are common descriptions about normal wear and tear that even come from HUD guidelines at the national level. We hope to bring you some clarity about this common question about what normal wear and tear is from our experience here at North County Property Group. Sometimes we're put in the difficult position of having to explain it both to the tenant and the property owner. The tenant's security deposit cannot be used for repairing property defects or deterioration caused by normal daily life at the property. The security deposit also can't be charged for any condition if they existed at the time that the departing tenant moved in, or if a property item is beyond its useful life. If the condition is obvious neglect, misuse, or abuse, this would qualify for a security deduction. For instance, Let's use the example of carpeting fraying in high traffic areas, simply from people walking on it on a daily basis. That's considered normal wear and tear. Same with small stains, that's normal wear and tear. But something like burned carpet, badly stained carpet, bad pet stains, or pet odors that have ruined carpet, that would be considered damaged by the tenants. Another example is small nail holes where pictures were hung. That is considered normal wear and tear. In fact, there's a definition of what is a small nail. It's the size of a penny or two inch nail or less. Pinholes, maybe natural cracks in the wall, small chips in the plaster, that's all normal wear and tear. But items such as large holes that have been cut or maybe areas where the tenant had a large bracket mounted for a heavy TV, if those holes aren't filled or patched or maybe areas are cut in the drywall, like openings where the TV cables are passed through to the receiver, but then not patched later, that is considered damage. Smudges and scuffs on walls are wear and tear but large stains or permanent stickers applied to the walls, or even paint that was unauthorized by the landlord, that's damage. Looking to an official government source, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, weighs in on this topic on pages 55 and 56 of a document titled Special Claims and Processes Guide. It was published first in June of 2006. According to HUD, damage usually requires extensive repairs and are at a greater cost than normal wear and tear. Damage would usually be the result of a tenant's abuse or negligence other than just that of normal daily life. These types of decisions can easily become the genesis of a tenant-landlord dispute, and because of this, many owners of rental homes leave these manners to a professional property manager like North County Property Group. We've seen this a lot. We can make good recommendations and have good common sense, and we work well with both tenants and owners for logical and reasonable interpretation of security deposit laws. For all of us here at North County Property Group, we hope you found this information helpful. Feel free to contact us with any questions you may have.